Hello, my name is Marta Zlatic. I'm a program leader, a MRC investigator at the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology. I joined the LMB in December 2019. Uh, before that, I was for 10 years a group leader at the Howard Hughes Medical Institute, Janilia Research Campus. And uh, before that, um, I started my uh, career in science with an undergraduate degree uh, at Cambridge University, Trinity College. So I read uh, natural sciences and then I did a master's in or part three in chemistry. And then I did a PhD in neuroscience also in Cambridge with Professor Michael Bate at the Department of Zoology that was in developmental neuroscience. And then I moved into studying the circuit basis of behavior uh, in my own lab after that at Janelia. And so um, right now uh, we are, uh, the goal of our research is to understand the circuit basis of learning, predicting, and decision-making in the brain using uh, the Drosophila larva as a model system. I was always fascinated by animal behavior. So ever since uh, I was a little child, I really wanted to be a biologist and study the basis of behavior and how the brain generates behavior. Initially, I was also I was also always very interested in languages and linguistics and very complex human brain functions. So I, during my undergraduate in parallel, I also uh, read linguistics and Russian at Zagreb University. So for a while I thought I would study neuropsycholinguistics, but then, and, and the basis of very complex human behaviors. But then I realized that um, really, I would like to understand at the very cellular and molecular level, how brains uh, generate behavior, how they learn. And so I decided after all to pursue a PhD uh, in Drosophila as a model system. And first of all, to try and understand how this complex organ develops, because that is the basis for, um, how afterwards it behaves. And, and that's, I still think we, you know, we, we don't really understand even the basic simple behaviors. Uh, and so I, um, I got so fascinated by um, even, you know, the mysteries of a much simpler brain than a human brain. And I think so many things are common um, that I'm still studying the fruit fly brain. Um, so one of the really most exciting things to me is that we are starting to be able to combine um, really the analysis of circuits at synaptic level with uh, analysis of functional activity in identified circuits and then behavior. So we are really starting to get a comprehensive picture of how the brain works at multiple scales. So um, one of the cool discoveries is um, the mechanisms by which brains integrate uh, information from different sensory modalities to enhance action selection. And then the circuit mechanisms by which learning is controlled and regulated um, by uh, the brain and Obviously, for my scientific career, um, it was my uh, PhD advisor, Professor Michael Bate, who really um, taught me to just go for the big question and to look at the data to, with a prepared mind. So to be ready to just initially look in an unbiased way and, and then you know, come up with hypotheses 
but this this feeling of completely um, curiosity driven research where yeah everything seemed possible and it was a very yeah collaborators who enabled the kinds of research we do that obviously um, you know everything we do would not have been possible without the development of amazing genetic tools in Drosophila. Um, so especially the, the amazing genetic uh, library by Jerry Rubin that opened doors to the kind of uh, research that we are doing. And then incredible advances in electron microscopy without which this uh, rapid correlations of structure and function would be impossible. So these are the things that really um, enabled my uh, research as it is. So also collaborations with Albert Cardona were absolutely key, who is also my husband. <laughs> so, in, in fact, what I love about it is that um, it is actually similar to what I've worked before because where I've worked before was also modeled after LMB. So I was at the Janilia Research Campus and this, they have similar visions, uh, namely um, small research groups, very collaborative and uh, focusing on big ideas, long-term projects and high-risk projects. And um, so I started my lab in such an environment and I could not imagine moving anywhere else. And there was only one other place that was, you know, that has what well, there might be more but like LMP has that kind of an I mean they pioneered this approach so it was my dream place to work um and that's that's why yeah. I think what makes a good scientist is curiosity passion uh rigor a very uh methodical critical thinking but also imagination and ability to imagine completely new questions and imagine completely new answers to existing questions, to be very open to the data that one sees. And yeah, so the scientific breakthrough I would most like to make is to really understand how the brain learns and then how it uses the learned information to make decisions. So how can this uh, relatively, you know, very tiny, tiny organ uh, be so powerful computationally and so intelligent? How can it be so flexible in the huge diversity of learning tasks it can adapt? Uh, how can it store memories? Uh, how can it then rapidly use them in a context dependent manner? So how does this you know, incredibly complex circuit architecture, we just see it, we see all of its complexity, all the diversity of circuit motifs. How can we make sense of that to understand how all of this entire organ works together to generate this complex, cognitive functions well I, this doesn't sound maybe too good but if i could do anything again i would not change anything i enjoyed every step of it <laughs> and um at this point i don't think i would have done anything differently <laughs> you should ask me that in 20 years our work has been quite badly impacted by COVID and there have been no positive outcomes, but we managed to still, thanks to the modern technology and enormous effort that LMB has done, uh, surprisingly, we still managed to continue and, and to be productive. But obviously for me, the biggest impact was lack of childcare during the lockdown and then uh, a lot of catching up to do uh, because of that. So. Well, I must say I never imagined my scientific career. Um, I mostly think of the present and I was usually 
just guided by what I found most interesting at the moment. And so the way I chose places is I just want, really wanted to do specific, you know, address specific questions. And I went to wherever would let me do what I wanted to do. So in that sense, it's been exactly as I wished for. I was always so lucky to be able to focus on the research I love and to do what I find incredibly interested in. So I was able to try, you know, follow my passion and curiosity. Um, but I never imagined myself in a particular place or a country. I didn't know uh, where I would end up. And I love it where I've ended up. You know, LMB is a, uh, it, it was a, it is a dream place, but I never imagined myself anywhere <laughs> except somewhere where I can do what I love. My favorite thing to do away from science is art. Um, I used to, well, and, and languages. So I used to love learning languages. Uh, I loved doing theater and now I love going to the theater. I love uh, reading literature. Um, I love uh, yeah, watching movies. So those are my favorite things. A key advice I would give to young people is to do what they love, not to worry about the future, but about the question they're addressing not to care what others think of them, <laughs> not to listen to older people's advice, but to follow their nose and their intuition and be brave. I think a major breakthrough will be to understand uh, the architectures of the brain and how brains work. That will be one of the major breakthroughs, I think. <laughs> <laughs>